we are up and we are on YouTube. 10 seconds. Are you ready to go? Yes, click the broadcast. Okay, in three, two, The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Fred Lam here, and welcome to our Ask Fred Lam Show, episode 38. Now, in today's topic, I actually want to do a full Q&A section and a review section just to actually help you guys out. Now, we haven't done a Q&A for quite some time now, and each time I do it, you guys absolutely loved it. So today, instead of doing a typical training or have another guest on board, what I really want to do is have a full Q&A section with you guys to actually help you in your business. Now, I know that some of you guys are having different questions or you may be stuck on this or you want me to review your ads or you want me to review your store. This is the absolute perfect time for you guys to actually have me for a full hour where I actually look into your store, look into your number, look into your stats, give you guys feedback on what I would do if I were in your guys' shoe. And again, all right, this only comes on a first come, first serve basis. So for those of you who are basically putting your questions in, make sure you actually put in your entire question, get all the details all inside one question box, okay? So for those of you who are on GoToWebinar, you do it in the comment, uh, in the questions box. If you're on Facebook, put it on Facebook, in, right in the comment box, or if you're on YouTube, just put it right in the live chat section at the same time. And I'll be moving across three different platforms to answer as many questions as possible. Now, like always, we always have hundreds of people here with us. So it is humanly impossible for me to answer every single person's question, but I'll do all I can to actually answer as many as possible and to help as many people as possible. All right. Now, last but not least, what we're also going to be doing is again, I will be giving away $500 just for you being here to reward the one person, the one lucky person who is going to take away $500 from my zero up fund that you actually use it towards your business, use it towards your ads and use it towards our knowledge on acquiring a program or a system out there. Now, on top of that, here's one thing that I wanted to really be upfront and honest and be open to talk to you guys about this. Um, it's a sad news, okay? Now, obviously, put a one in the question box if you guys can actually hear me first. Um, when I started talking, it seems like no, one, no one's commenting in the questions box, so I just want to make sure, all right, so everyone can actually uh, see me, hear me uh, loud and clear. Sweet. All right, so here is a unfortunate news. Um, that I want to bring up to you guys. So for our Ask Fred Lam show, today is going to be our last section for our Ask Fred Lam show. And we are going to put on a complete pause for a full month, and we will resume with a new show um, in the month of November. So I know that a lot of you guys love it to be here every single, um, every single, Sorry, you guys love it to be here. I'm just looking at some comments. I know that you guys love it to be here every single week, but obviously I got some important priorities that I got to take care of first, and I'm just going to take a quick break, okay? Take a one short month break uh, for me, and then going back into a complete new show starting in November. Now, I know that it will impact some of you guys because you guys always look forward for this. Um, I already got people saying, we'll miss you. Um, some people are saying like an unhappy emoji with like some crying symbols on it. Um, David said, no, haha, you rock. Um, yep, I got a lot of people saying, oh my God, I just found this for any replay anywhere. So Linda, if you want to actually see the replay, it is all in my YouTube channel. Now, there is going to be a chance of what's happening is that um, I may shut down this go to webinar link. So when we're starting a new show, you would actually have to re-register again to actually save your seat. Okay. And I'm planning on changing the dynamics of things uh, for our new upcoming show in November. Okay. It's going to happen in November. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my Facebook page or like my Facebook page. Um, and make sure you actually whitelist my email address to make sure that you are going to actually get a seat 
for our new show, our new season starting in November. All right. So that's what's going to be happening. Now, obviously, that's a quick housekeeping item that I want to iron out and to share with you guys. Um, and I know that a lot, I see a lot of comments saying you guys are going to miss this. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be one month. Okay. It's just going to be one month. Uh, with no Ask Fred Lamb show every single Tuesday. However, here's the best part, right? I will still email you guys. I will still give you guys training. I will still invite you guys to workshop and all those other good stuff. So you absolutely have to watch for my emails. Make sure you open them, read them. I may be throwing different articles out there and have a lot of fun stuff happening um, in the next month, regardless if when we're not even going to be having the show. All right. So Put a me in the, I know you guys are also sad. I see a lot of people saying so sad already. So put a me in the question box if you guys are excited about our November show, which I haven't even announced what it's going to be talking about, but it's going to be pretty crazy stuff. Um, and I am trying to, or I hope to, by the end of this year, is to actually have uh, one of my big uh, room in the office, an actual TV studio uh, for my upcoming shows and all those other stuff. So it's going to be very, very interesting. And again, uh, the Ask Fred Lamb show, we have been doing this for 38 weeks um, in a row. Didn't stop a single one. We've been doing it for 38 weeks. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. It's been like almost uh, nine months that we have been running this. And again, I'm more, I'm, I'm pumped to keep running these. It's just that I'm just going to take a one month break. Um, I'm working on some of my own business stuff because um, all my businesses are about to actually take a very, very quick leap right now. And I just need to actually commit myself to my team members to actually help them and assist them. So that's why at the end of the day, uh, today is going to be the last episode um, of our Ask Fred Lamb show. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to host these again in November. We will be hosting more um, regular weekly show um, what is it going to call it? I haven't figured out a name yet, but it may not be the Ask Fred Lamb show because I'm going to transition Ask Fred Lamb into something else um, in the month of November. So there's going to be a lot of exciting things going to come. Make sure you guys look out for my email. Uh, make sure you actually follow me on social media so that you guys can actually get the most up-to-date information on what is going to happen. So with that being said, here's what we're going to do. All right, now we're going to move on officially to our Q&A section. And while we're doing that, I'm just gonna quickly open up uh, YouTube and, uh, sorry, open up quickly, open up YouTube and Facebook so I can actually see all the comments on there. I usually have a laptop with me, but uh, my laptop, I left it at home. So I'm only on my desktop right now. So tell me how you guys are feeling today. Just are you guys excited? Are you guys looking forward for this section? While well, I'm just pulling all these stuff up, I'm just out of curiosity. Oops. Oops. Oh, shut up, Fred. All right. So I'm just looking at, all right, just looking at some of the comments on there. Um, that's what I'm doing. I am going to, Fred, I'm just opening up all the channels so I can actually see um, all the questions that are being uh, sent over and going from there. All right. So I'm going to first start with go to webinar and um, I just logged on into YouTube and I got Mohammed Osman saying make my first Shopify sale yesterday. Woo. All right. Congratulations. That is phenomenal. That is amazing. Um, all right. So let's go right into the Q&A section and I'm going to make sure that I copy things correctly. All right. So we got Trisha. Come on, go to webinar. We got Trisha. Trisha having a big question for me. Um, all right. So Trisha asked, dear Fred, please help. Um, let me see what she say. If I want to use the purchase standard event. Okay. So we're talking about Facebook ad right now. Um, how do I sort the one purchase event code for different product during an ad campaign? I think previously you mentioned you have a software solution to sort various products in Facebook. Please remind me, there are no good answers online. All right, so uh, Trisha, my question, my answer is very simple. Uh, go to my YouTube channel and search for Pixel Bay, okay? So I do have an app out there that really helps you um, 
segment out your purchase standard event based on product or a group of products. And it's actually done through my software called Pixelbay, which is available in Shopify store, in the app store, and it's all approved by Facebook, uh, sorry, Facebook and um, Shopify. So you wanna Google Pixelbay in, uh, or you should not Google, search Pixelbay in um, Shopify app store, and you will actually see it. I have a lot of video training inside to specifically talk about, uh, or specifically talk about, I've got people making fun of my, uh, specifically, I hate that word. Um, it just comes out really awkward for me, uh, being Chinglish. Anyways, so with that, uh, just look at Pixel Bay and you'll see exactly what it is, and that will solve your problem. All right. So let me see the next question. All right, uh, Claire. So Claire has a question. Hi, Fred. Claire from Aussie Land. So I believe that's Australia. All right. How do you figure out what products will sell? in your niche so here's a obviously a very 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 commonly asked question how do you figure out what products will sell in your niche i can tell you flat out i do not know okay if i tell you i know i would actually go down the street and buy a lottery ticket and actually win like a hundred million dollars and be just doing stupid stuff um but at the end of the day what you need to know is that you don't want to assume or you don't want to say well this i think this product's gonna sell or i think this product will sell well within my niche um, i think my customers are going to actually buy this product you do not want to actually go and market based on assumption if the product's going to sell or not what you want to do is very simple you want to actually set up a five dollar per day facebook ad campaign and let the prospect tell you if they're gonna buy it or not. There are so many products right now online. There are millions and millions of products that you can actually sell, especially through um, inventory arbitrage. But at the end of the day, you won't know if that product is gonna sell or not within your niche if you actually don't get the data to come back to you. Now, here's an extra layer to what I'm gonna be talking about. So yes, first of all, in order for you to know what product you need in order for you to know what product sells, you need to run ads to let the data tell you the story. Like this is the golden rule when you're running an online business. If this was 10 years ago, you have no way of having the ability to do this because if you put a paper, if you put an ad on a newspaper or put an ad on TV or put an ad on the radio, you won't know if that ad is gonna actually drive you sale or not. But right now, thanks to the internet and thanks to the revolutionary way of advertising online, you get data for just $5. You look at the four level optimization. Are you getting a sale? What's your click through rate? What is your cost per click? What is your CPM? Those four indicators will instantly tell you if that product is going to sell or if that product is not gonna sell. I have a lot of campaigns where I actually shut it down after running it for less than 24 hours because I know based on the data that is coming back to me if that product's gonna sell or not, all right? Now, on top of that, I'm gonna peel the onion a little bit to go even deeper. When you are saying, well, I've seen other people sell this product and it is doing very well. Why am I not selling well? well or why am I not selling any of it? The additional factor to a product being sold very well or not is going to be your ad creative and your targeting. Okay, very important stuff. The ad creative, the targeting, and the product is the three main, 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 main key. But again, like I said, to answer your question in short, you want to test out the product yourself on ads to see if that product is going to be sold or not. And that's the number one golden rule, all right? Uh, put the word make sense in the question box if that actually makes sense, all right? Awesome, all right. Not a lot of people say it makes sense coming in. All right, next question is by Sebastian. Sebastian, Sebastian, all right. Sebastian said, question, for a single product, do I have to create a different campaign if I have to test new targeting or can I do the new targeting under the same campaign but in different asset? Excellent question that you brought this up. This is more a little bit advanced. So here's how I run my Facebook campaign. One campaign, sorry, the campaign level, 
equal to your one single product, okay? Assets equal to targeting. So to answer your question, Sebastian, what I would do is, that's right, you just create a new asset going after new targeting within that one campaign, all right? That's what you wanted to do. So you always want to have one product in your campaign and you can add in a lot more different targeting under each of the campaigns, okay? Sorry, under each of the assets that is under that one singular campaign. That's what you wanna do. So when you're logging on to Facebook, what is how it should look like is that each campaign is equal to one product, okay? Each campaign is equal to a specific objective like website conversion. And then if you click on that campaign under that, it will have all your targeting in place, all right? So I hope that makes sense. For you, let me see the next question. Well, I answered three questions on GoToWebinar, so I'm gonna fire it off to, oops, I forgot to be playing my screen, my apology. I'm actually typing my question um, as I am saying this. So let me fire off to YouTube to see what kind of questions are in YouTube. Um, let's see. Uh, so, all right, um, Leo from YouTube has a question. And he said, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Leo asked, oops, all right, I hate that. One sec. All right, Leo said, Fred, why I don't have the option to select website conversion on Facebook page? Well, the answer is you select it in your ads manager when you create your ad not in your Facebook page, all right? So when you go in and create your ad on Facebook, it will give you the ability to actually do that. Um, Cora said, what can I do to use Stripe payments outside eligible countries? So if you go to Shopify, Shopify actually have all these done. What I would suggest you to do is just simply go to the live chat and ask them and say, hey, um, I live in South Africa or whatever. I'm just making it up right now, okay? Uh, I live in South Africa. Uh, what is the best merchant processing solution for me to process uh, my orders in my e-commerce store? And they will give you a lot of different um, um, suggestions and you choose that one from there, all right? Um, so Damien Park has something interesting. Let's see, Damien Park. So, hey Fred, um, can you take a look at my company's website, cbdlean.com, and critique it. Um, I can't see this, it's blocking my way. Um, and how could we utilize email marketing with CBD products? Thank you so much in advance. Um, I don't know what CBD products are. Um, I would assume it's, I don't know what it is, and I don't wanna assume it, so I'm just gonna go to the URL. Uh, all right, let's see what it is. Dun, 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 dun. The website is taking forever. It's called the, ah, I knew it. Um, it is, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so that already turned me off. Like I'm on the web page and all of a sudden I hear like audio, I hear music, I hear sound. And I was like, holy crap, it's my computer hacked. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind. So one thing, if you want to put a video that's on autoplay, please put it above the fold. Like, do not put it like below the fold. What I mean by below the fold is I got to scroll down to look for the video. Um, that really turned me off and I would just shut down right away um, on that end of things. Now, again, I am, I don't have an opinion about um, marijuana. As you guys can see, this is a marijuana site. Um, I hope that you have the legal license to sell this. This is the number one thing that I want to bring up is that you have the legal stuff, legal rights to sell all these and uh, yada, yada, yada. So uh, with that, there are a lot of contradicting or controversy around marijuana, okay? Um, and if you really want to use email marketing to sell more of your products in the space, what you want to do is to provide content. Um, that's how you would actually stick out a lot, okay? Provide content on why, uh, on 
why or on how um, greens, I'm just going to call it greens, how greens um, can help your body um, talk about basically the suppressed it information about it. Um, just talk about basically educating people more about marijuana because um, I know for a fact that marijuana, there is a lot of good stuff behind it. Again, I'm not choosing sides. It's just based on what I know um, that there are medical relief with it, but you just have to be careful. And if you want to actually sell more products and if you want to actually um, be known as an authority to selling these product, you want to provide value because the more value that you give out, the more trust the people will actually gain to your brand and you can actually go from there. Now, on top of that, um, I feel that this spot is way too big. Like this spot right here is like massive. It took away a lot of information away. Um, so I don't want to do that. What you wanted to do is make this banner size like smaller or remove all the white spots. Um, that's what I would do. Um, the next thing is I may change up the logo because obviously when none of these stuff got loaded, I was looking at CBD tech. Um, I was thinking that you're in a tech company or you're basically selling me a software or something. So you may want to be using the green and have that rapport being built with these people that will actually try these edible. All right. Um, next thing is, so these are your products, third party lab, CBD has been featured on, um, all these other stuff. There are testimonials, there are articles, triple lab tested. So you have all these great stuff in there. Um, shop, dosage, dosage, what's dosage? And for some odd reason, I have super fast internet speed. And it seems like your site takes forever for me to load. I have no idea why. It's just loading nonstop. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, it's just loading. It's like, I'm not sure what server you're on. But at the end of the day, that's what I would do. Um, content. Provide as much content as possible and as much value as possible. And that will actually help you drastically when you're going from there. Um, so let me see. So Cora asked, Cora Addicts have the same question asking about the direct payment gateway. Again, I would generally ask about Shopify and they will figure it out um, and they will tell you guys from there. Um, so I got LB Suba. Okay, LB Suba. Let's see. I'm not sure if you're a he or you're a she. I'll just call you LB. Okay, so LB said, Fred, is it possible to set up a conversion campaign without having enough data in Facebook? The answer is yes, okay? You can start a brand new account and still go after conversion campaign. That is absolutely what I would actually suggest you to do. Um, and that is absolutely fine. All right. Um, let me see. I'm just going to go into Facebook right now to see if there are questions coming in. All right. So I got Ganika's um, Enkin. All right. My apology if I, if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Uh, Fred from Cameron having problems with PayPal. I can't receive transfer from customers. I try calling PayPal, but no one available. Uh, please advise what to do. So when it comes to PayPal problem, um, Gansius, I hope I pronounced your name properly. Uh, what I would suggest you to do is contact VIA email. Um, they're, they're so much easier to contact through email than phone. Uh, when you go in phone, they, you will just keep looping in to different reps and all this other stuff. You will not get the perfect answer. You would just want to email their contact. And when you're inside your PayPal account, there is a place where you can actually create that ticket, that email ticket, and actually have them look into there. Okay. Um, that's what I would suggest you to do. And that's what I would do if I'm, I'm, I'm in your shoe. All right. Uh, next question is by Winston Go. Okay, let me see. Winston. All right, Winston said, hi. Oh, it's supposed to be hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. How do I target the right audience specifically? Um, I have a hard time getting 
sales even though I use audience insight to break demographics and behaviors. My website is babyhouse.net. I use the $5 per day approach, but I'm running low on budget and funds. So let me look at your website first. So here's one thing. You want to rapid test your products, and that's very, very important. And I'm not sure what products you will be selling, um, but when you're selling, what you want to do, one of the most important thing is being in the customer's shoe, like if I am, if I were the mom, um, will I be buying that product too? Now you have a lot of products on here already. I'm not sure what you have tested, what you have sold, but right off the bat, I can tell you that this is going to be too generic. 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 This may have a chance. Okay. This product may have a chance. Um, this product's too generic. This product's too generic. This product. Uh, it's, yeah, this product's too generic. This is a good product. I saw this build proof product before, like this one over here. Um, but you need a video to actually sell this product because obviously this is a product. If people just look at the image, they have no clue what it means. Um, so this will not sell. This is too generic, too generic. Um, this may work, but eight ninety five may be too expensive. This may work as well. This is too generic, too generic, too generic, too generic, too generic. So when you're going into the market, you don't want to go after a product that's too generic. You want to actually go in market with a product that basically is like, wow, I really want this. Or wow, this actually have this function. Or wow, this actually looks so nice. Or build a rapport with the audience. So choosing the product is actually important. At the same time, your ad creative need to speak to the right audience. And the beauty of all of these is that, again, you want to test with $5. And if you're working with very tight budget, what I would ask you to do is just run the ads for 24 hours and look at the four level optimization again, CTR, CPC, um, CPM, and the cost per acquisition. Because those data will tell you right away if that product is going to sell or not. And if you wait until like three days, that's $15 $15 for per product and you have a lot of product that can get come really a hefty bill. But again, what I would suggest you to do is simply look at the data and you want to actually use product that people will go like, wow, I want that product or wow, that has a very interesting feature on that product. Um, and that's what I would suggest you to do. Like if I'm going into here, a lot of these products are pretty generic, but this one, the baby nibbler feeder may be a pretty good one because obviously there are going to be fruits in here. Um, so this is a good one, but these right now, I'm looking at all your product selections. These are going to be too generic, like way too generic to actually go and market and compete uh, with any other product. So again, like I said, one thing that I really look at is, will that product pique my interest? Will that product be something that I really want to sell at the same time? And you simply use $5 per day of ads and run it for in 24 hours, it will tell you immediately if that product is going to sell or not. And that is going to be a very, very, very important key. Um, this product is actually pretty interesting. Um, a pretty good one. But these ones are a little bit too generic for it to actually sell. Only again, one of the most important things is you, you got to basically think from a consumer standpoint. Um, if I'm a mom, Will I be buying this product? Did, did this give me like a wow fact? Did, it, did this pique my interest? So it's very important, okay, Winston? So again, my answer to you is run $5 per day and test a lot more products that are not generic, okay? Right now, it's a little bit too generic on what product you have. Um, and then and um, look at the four level of optimization within 24 hours and cut off ads that don't even perform, okay? Don't wait. Um, I see a lot of people that wait and say, oh, it may pick back up uh, tomorrow or uh, two days from now. Um, if you're testing a new product, I won't wait. I would just go straight for it and then in less than 24 hours, I'll just gonna shut it off, all right? That's what I would do if I were you. Okie doke. Let me look at the question inside Go to Webinar now. I'm going back into there. Um, all right. So Dave. Dave has a question. What do I enter on Facebook ads to steer readers to my landing page? Someone wrote that you cannot show a URL on your Facebook ad. So Dave, a very great question. And I'm not sure where you actually got that piece of information that you cannot put 
a URL in your FB ad, you can. What I normally do is that I have a link in my post text, okay? That's what I do. I have a link in my post text and I tell them specifically to click, okay? Click order now or whatever and then have people there. What I also do is um, in the link description, I tell people to click here as well. All right, so that way that you have two places for people to actually click to actually go to your landing page. One is in your post text, the other one is actually on the image, where when you put in the image, something like um, this, oops, something like this. Let me show you an example real quick. Uh, Fred Lamb. Something like, do, 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 do. Oh, I'm almost 40,000 followers. Cool. All right. So I'm going to look for a good one to share you guys an example if I can find it. All right. So, for example, here, I have a link here and I have a link here. So I tell people to sign up, I tell people to here. This is the best way um, having two links, one in your post text and also one, which is this big section over here. That's a native form. Um, and those are two key drivers to bring people to your landing page. Okay. All right. So, all right. Chelsea has a big text. Chelsea, Chelsea Daniels. Okay. She said, or she asked, um, could you please take a look at my site to see, let me know if I'm on the right track or not. I haven't opened my store yet, so the password page is still active. When you land on my site, here's the information you need to get access. Okay, let's take a look. All right, let's see. Here you go. Oops. Uh, oops, sorry, enter password. Um, paste this on here. Okay, let's see. So, first of all, I'm not really the fan of, of, of the logo, um, just FYI. So, a couple of touch points, and let me go through all the, I'm in the final stage of getting all the add ons, installing, converting, I'm sorry, I'm, those screens are legit. I've created Twitter versus Instagram, and I'm in the process of gathering valuable content to post on my store's blog, and I can choose them to direct people to who read my social media post back to my store. I'm almost at a point where I'm going to start creating Facebook advertising. Okay, all right, so Fred's feedback. All right, so here are the feedbacks that I have for you. Number one, the logo can be better. Um, immediately, I don't know why, for some reason, you're going into market of, I believe you're going after the hair, um, the hair scope, the horoscope market. But the first feeling that I got is this is kind of like a spiritual market. Um, so it kind of turned me off a little bit, despite the fact that you're actually going after the horoscope and the astrology market. Second thing is that you want a more clean and smaller logo. This already took, like, I have a wide screen, like a very big screen. I have a 27-inch iMac. Um, and this right here, it already took, like, one-fourth of the page, which is just the logo, which I don't think is needed because you're pushing a lot of things below the boat. So you want the logo to be better and simpler slash cleaner, okay? That's the first thing. Um... Number two is that your image over here, okay, the slider image cannot be pixelated, okay? So it's very important because the first feeling that I look at when, or even from a consumer standpoint, when I go to a page, I want to make sure all the pictures are crisp and clear. If it gives me a vibe that there like even the resolution of the image is pixelated, it really derails the person to say, well, this doesn't look legit. I'm just going to leave. Um, that's a very important point. Put a me in the question box if you guys agree with that. Um, all right, so I got a lot of people saying me right now because again, 
that's the first instinct that a person comes in mind with when they go to page and they see pictures that are pixelated it looks like they're back into 1998 um they're not going to want to move forward because they don't feel that this is legit all right that's what i would that's the that's one of the big 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 warning bells that i have um let me look at one of your products see all bracelets all rings okay so let's see let's say that i'm gonna look at this bracelet um so you have this handmade colorful leather braided zodiac burn if we we're looking rah, 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 rah. Um, not bad this is pretty good so again i will up this text a little bit more um to really use some copy so number three have more uh text on talking about the product and use copy techniques on there all right that's what i would suggest um for just 10.99 other than that i don't really have anything else that i can see of i'm gonna look at your blog so you're still working on your blog you have your faq I'm just going to all collection again i'm just going to see necklaces so you have all different kinds of necklaces so you have black oh i like this this looks pretty nice oh this looks pretty nice all right um so yeah other than that i don't think there's going to be any problem um and it seems like you're getting sale and this big rim is being a joke says 263 people have purchased this item um and going from there so those are the most important thing that really stood out for me um and i would actually go from there all right let's look at the next question all right so all right sebastian again so sebastian asked while testing a new product is it okay if i create different ads or different creative for a single product under the same asset um yes you want to do that just want to make sure Brett's answer so your answer to the first one yes you want to do that to let fb decide which ad is going to be the best all right what's your second question would it affect the algorithm or winner ad if i turn off the poor performing under the same ad set it will not um it will not um will it reset the learning process of facebook no it will not and in a five dollar budget how many ads i can create to split test under the same asset without affecting the curve i go after what i call three x three so i'll go after three ads max under one asset and basically let facebook decide which one to go after um so that's what i would do that's what i recommend all right so one more question on go to webinar let's see um roberts all right roberts are some niches too saturated to go in like dogs or is it more that the product we pick in the market i do have to say um one thing for a fact is that there's no such thing as saturation um only because of a couple things if you look at it from a perspective i'm not going to type this out i'm going to explain this um more thoroughly and you guys need to follow me with some numbers okay so let's say that you're going after a million audience okay and for you to actually achieve a two percent click through rate and i talk about a link so a person that actually piqued their interest and they click on your ad and basically out of a hundred people you technically only have two people that went to your ad 98 of them basically didn't really attract them in some kind of form right so with that that means that when you're running an ad you are counting out or you're excluding the 98 percent of the people that's within the niche now you can hit a saturation point not with a product you can hit a saturation point with your creative so if you're selling the same product but you have a completely different angle and a completely different creative and going after the same market 
you can actually replicate the same result that you had earlier when you start to have a campaign that's performing really well because you are speaking to the remaining 98 percent of the market that is still interested but it did not speak their language on having them to click on the ad itself so with that a creative can really go saturated but when it comes to a product it's very hard to actually hit a saturation point and here's what i mean by that if you look at a iphone every every freaking human being know what an iphone is did they hit a saturation point no well let's look at cell phone let's look broader cell phone every single person needs a cell phone but did the cell phone market hit a saturation point no it's really the products and the creative going into product or going into the market that makes a whole lot of difference. All right. Uh, put a one in the question box if that makes sense, because it's very important. It's very hard to actually saturate um, a market. Um, it's pretty tough unless if you like even well, Coca-Cola is a consumable product, so it's very hard to actually compare if you're selling just a product that's no recurring. But at the end of the day, what you need to know is that the creative can hit a saturation point, but a market doesn't really hit a saturation point, okay? Um, and even if you have a product that is selling, um, and then suddenly you feel that you're hitting the saturation point because your click-through rate is dropping, your cost per acquisition is increasing, then it's really time for you to create a new ad um, or a new creative to go into the market with. And technically using my chase in the market method, it will absolutely work. All right. So that's what I would do. Oops. That's what I would do. All right. Um, moving on to back into YouTube. Let's see. Um, let's see what kind of questions there are. Oops. Wow. There's a lot of questions coming in. Uh, let's see. Um, Chris Cross, I actually just asked Shopify today about the merchant system available in Philippines and they sent me an email with the link with the right info. Just give them a call and they will help you out. Thank you, Chris, for letting us know. Miami News. Um, question, I have one at that actually brings in some sales and I don't know how to scale. I'm paying $10 per day, auto bidding dot niche, and it seems to be an item of some interest. How do I go from there? So great question, uh, Miami. All right, I'm going to copy this question out and address this. So we have Miami. Oops. Miami. All right, so here's my answer to you Increase your budget no more than 20%. Okay, um, is it 20%? Let me see the numbers. Yes, 20%. Increase, uh, increase your budget uh, no more than 20%. Anything over 20% will reset the algorithm. Well, not reset the algorithm. I have to say it will go back into the learning phase for your ads and it may affect your sales. Now, I'm not sure how many sales you have so far, but here's what I would do. I would create new assets to go after new targeting within the dog niche at $5 per day, $5 or $10 per day, and uh, reach to broader market. After getting roughly a thousand uh, clicks on your um, page of your specific product, I would run look alike one percent look alike of the page visitors to your specific product and run ads with no targeting okay so you slowly want to increment and slowly build up the ladder your goal is to get 500 sales and run one percent look-alike on all your buyers of your product or your specific product and it works and that's where the magic happens a lot now obviously i went jumping from page visitors all the way to uh buyers but the st latter steps 
is as follows, okay? Number one, interest targeting. Number two, uh, broad targeting. Number three, you want to run a 1% lookalike on your page visitors. Number four, you want to run a 1% lookalike on all on all your add to carts for your specific product. And then number five, you want to run 1% lookalike on all your buyers of your specific product. Now, here are the increments that I would go after, okay? 1,000 visitors, 2,000 visitors, 3,000 visitors, and 5,000 visitors, okay? The higher the number, the more data Facebook have, the more refined your, uh, blah, 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 the more refined your, um, at, uh, sorry, your lookalike audience is going to be. Now, for at the carts, what I would suggest you to do, I think it was, best stuff 500 but you can start with a hundred um, 250 500 a thousand um, 2,000 okay that's what I would do and then same thing for the lookalikes on the buyers now here's a very very important super important note super important note um, and this will not reset the algorithm or, re or um, enter your ads back into the learning process, okay? Uh, but it is super important that you actually jot this down, especially for you guys that are running a Facebook ads right now. Uh, make sure you create a, a custom audience, and you can do that all through Pixelbay, by the way. You can do this via Pixelbay. So you wanna create a custom audience on the three different levels, okay? Um, the three different levels are number one, page visitors, number two, add two carts, and number three is your uh, purchasers or purchased, okay? And what you wanted to do, okay, is the following. Make sure you exclude all the custom audience, make sure you exclude, all your custom audiences or all your purchase sorry purchase custom audiences in all your assets okay uh the reason why is that if a person have seen your ad bought your product and you keep sending them the same ad it will actually hurt your feedback score and the relevancy of uh, inside Facebook. It will hurt your campaign overall. So you want to make sure that you create the custom audiences based on purchase and exclude them from all the assets that you have. Now, adding exclusions will not reset the algorithm. Okay. Let me repeat that. Putting in the exclusion will not reset the algorithm. So you can actually go back into your campaign or go back into your asset and then adding the exclusion, it will not reset the algorithm or go back into the learning process, all right? Very important. Now, at the same time, okay, if you are running people that are in the add to carts, make sure you remove, okay? If So let's say that if you have to 1%, okay, so here's an example, let me write this out. Let's say for example, okay, you have a 1% lookalike um, um, for page visits, um, ad running. And you also have a 1% lookalike for add to carts, right? Okay, if this happens, or I'm gonna do it at a deeper level, if you have a 1% lookalike for purchasers running, okay? When you have these three running, what you want to do is you want to add in exclusions again, okay? Very important. You want to exclude um, your buyers, you want to exclude the 1% of your lookalike at to carts. And here you want to basically exclude again um, and your 1%, uh, what you call 1% uh, purchasers. So that way you are purely just going after the page visitors that did not go to add to cart, did not go to purchase and did not buy. Because what happens is that 
if you're building your lookalikes based on these three actions, you will have people that are very similar from page visits and active cart and purchasers. And when you have audience overlap, you will confuse the Facebook pixel and potentially you are going to be charged more money uh, when you're running ads. So with this, you want to make sure again, you exclude the 1% uh, uh, purchasers and buyers. And here, I would exclude the buyers, okay? That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you do exclusions so you're not causing audience overlap. You are not basically competing against yourself um, right into your stuff, and it will give more information right into uh, uh, Facebook to do your learning, to do all the optimization and all those other things. Great stuff. So, uh, great question that you got, Miami, and I actually went on way more than I should be. Uh, how many of you guys understand this? This is very, very, very important. All right, so I'm just drinking coffee. All right, I'm getting a lot of people yes right now. For those of you who actually, this is a little bit advanced. Uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, rewatch this. Okay, rewatch this uh, because this is some super, 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 super important information um, that you absolutely need to know. All right, so next question. Let me go back into, oops, uh, where am I? All right, go back into here. Uh, next question. Uh, let me go to 3%. So uh, Jonas Christ said this. Um, Jonas asked, Fred, can we do some AdWords training? So in our new, let's answer, in our new uh, show in November, I will be covering AdWords. AdWords, it's an animal. I love AdWords. AdWords is something that I true. I was actually looking at my AdWords spend yesterday, and I spent like freaking almost like five, like four point something million dollars just on AdWords. So yes, I can do that, um, and definitely I will go from there. All right. So one more question by Stephen Yelding. Let's see. Steven, oops, Yelding. Um, Fred, do you have to have any type of business license? So this is something that you have to ask your notary, local notary services or a lawyer about, uh, but I'm just sharing with you what I know. Uh, but again, you want to actually seek legal advice for all these. Um, in the beginning, again, I'm just gonna put a star, uh, seek legal advice for this and i'm just giving you an answer based on what i know okay um you can start as a sole okay i cannot i can never type this word uh pro prior ship or whatever i'm just gonna like okay i can't type that if anyone can help me out it's called sole proprietorship or whatever it starts with a sole pro i don't know how to type it out if anyone can help me out there you go. Thank you, jo uh, Joanne Marshall. See, I told you, I suck at English. All right, so you can start as a sole proprietorship, um, and that is absolutely fine. It's just that you are getting all the income into your personal, as a personal income, and you file your income taxes, yada, yada, yada. But when your business starts to take off, I do suggest you to actually uh, create a business account and depending on where you are, okay? Uh, in US, uh, recommended to create a LC. In Canada, create a corp, okay? Uh, that's what I was suggested to do. But in the beginning, you don't really have to worry about paying all these legal fees and all this other stuff. And anyways, getting an LLC created or getting a, uh, a corporation created in Canada, it's only cost, it only costs like a couple hundred bucks, um, but it's up to you. But again, you don't really need a business license to start, but you can start as a sole proprietorship, but when you know that it is gonna be good for you and you're getting results, what I would suggest you to do is actually create 
or, or go ahead and form a business. Um, that's what I would suggest you to do. Okie doke. Um, going to Facebook to answer some questions. Let's see. Uh, um, let's see. Where am I? All right, I have a lot more questions coming in. Um, and instead of typing, I'm just gonna plow away and ask and ask you these questions. Um, and you guys can actually see it all on here. Uh, I need to pause this. Pause this. All right, come on. Pause. How do you pause? Oh, I can't pause the live video. What? All right. Um, I hope it's not gonna cause any problem. Um, Anna. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. My apology. Hello, Fred. Thank you for taking uh, questions from us. My question is about Facebook ads. I have one ad that actually brings me some stuff. Oh, I answered that already. What am I talking about? Okay. Um, well, her follow-up question is also, what is your take on dynamic product ads? I have your Pixel app installed in my shop already, but don't know how to fragment it into specific products and create a specific catalog for my dynamic ad. Please answer any of my questions. It will be so much. So Anna, inside, um, when, you're, when you already have a product catalog created, what you can actually do is you can actually go ahead and in your ads manager, you can go and create a dynamic product ad and it will walk you through the process. It's actually pretty simple. Um, and once you have the product catalog feed food pixel bait on top of it, then it should be fine. All right. Chanel said, hi, friend. I really admire your dedication and teaching us everything that you know. Thank you so much for that. You are welcome. I have a question. My Facebook account got deactivated and I can't create a new one since it's under observation. Can I delete the deactivated account and made a new account instead? Or do I need to make a new Facebook page to create a new one? Thanks a lot, Fred. All right. So question uh, answer to you is I am not sure why you got deactivated. Uh, if you got deactivated because of um, just unusual activity, just wait for it. Um, but if you got deactivated for some other reason, then um, obviously I'm broadcasting on you on Facebook right now. I don't really want to say it, right? But what you wanted to do is go create a new account and go create a business manager account. This is very important. Always create a business manager account because you can create multiple ad accounts under your business manager account, which obviously if you run into any trouble with one ad account, you still have another ad account for backup. Um, so that's what I would do. You can still use the same Facebook page. Okay. That's absolutely fine. All right. Um, Ati said, how much should I invest on a single product? So again, Ati, I invest 30, sometimes 20 bucks a day, and I spend no more than 30 to 50 bucks on an ad. Um, but in the beginning, when you're spending $5, it will tell you right away what your data points is saying, what the data is coming back to you. What is your click through? What is your CPA? What is your cost per click? What is your CPM? Those data will tell you immediately if that product works or not, okay, or that ad works or not. And I would just simply shut down the ones that is like way off and um, not even spend the full five dollars as well. Um, and that's what I would do. So it's very hard to say exactly how much money you got to spend. You just have to let the data to tell you the story and justify from there. All right. Um, Ruska Jav. Sajovic said, hi, Fred, I made an ad with a product which sells really good. It is a bestseller on Amazon. Congratulations, buddy. Um, and I see a lot of successful ads on Facebook, but I only got few clicks on links. How can I make people click on the ad? I know the product is hit within our niche. It's all about the creative and your targeting. So obviously, it's all about the creative and the targeting. All right. Um, Alan said that my market are in North America. It is worth shipping only from U.S. wholesaler for using wholesaler overseas with their longer lead time. So if you have a U.S. wholesaler that can actually, that you can arbitrage their inventory, that is phenomenal. That is excellent. That is great. Um, but you also want to look at it from a pricing standpoint because you are a business owner. You run your business. Um, you want to look at, well, if I have an additional week of shipping time, but my cost is cut by half. I actually have more money to go into ads and make more margin. So you want to make that decision from there. Okay. Um, Adam said, I have a pixel bay and I want to see uh, why it's better to have one to 10% rather than 1% of the audience also is better for one or seven day conversion. So Adam, really great question to answer your question in short. Here's the following. You want to run 1%, 2 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%. 1% will always be the best because it is going to be the closest to the seed audience or source that you have. Test with 1% first. If it is working, then you move up to 2%. Okay, but make sure when you're running 2% is to exclude that 1%. Very important stuff. Um, now, for one or seven-day conversion, 
I typically would just go after one day conversion. And the reason why I go after one day conversion is that majority of times, if you look at your attribution window um, and at your attribution reporting inside Facebook, 95% of the times people buy on day one. Unless if you have a super long sales funnel and you're selling a higher ticket product, then you may want to do a seven day. Okay, so that's what I would suggest uh, on that end of things. Obviously, there is a lot of questions coming in and we have hit the top of the hour. Now, obviously, I try as much as I can to answer as fast as possible. And now, obviously, some questions actually have to go more in depth um, to give you guys some training and all those other stuff. So how many of you guys enjoyed today's section? Putting me right in the question box right now. If you guys, I see a lot of people giving me like unhappy faces because obviously they know that today is going to be the last episode of our Ask Fred Lamb show and we will be having a full month of a pause um, and going from there. All right. I see a lot of me and a lot of sad faces. My apology on that. But again, I'm just going to take one month of rest. And then at the end of the day, make sure you watch out for my emails. Follow me on social media. For those of you who are on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure you like me, like my Facebook page so you guys get the most updated information on what I have to release. And uh, we will be back strong even better show, even better content um, as of November. So November, the first week of November is when I'm going to be restarting all these stuff. Um, it's going to be very, very epic. I have a lot of stuff lined up for you guys. And on top of that, here's what I'm going to do. We are going to now, obviously in November, I will still give away $500 every week for my show or any training that I do just to actually help you guys and to inspire you guys and all those other stuff. So with that, I'm going to give away $500 right now, okay, uh, to a random hungry entrepreneur. And I'm going to do it on GoToWebinar, okay? I'm actually going to do it on GoToWebinar. Uh, I got a lot of people loving this episode today. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. So um, let me pause my screen. I'm going to take back a look at my notes, and I'm going to ask a crazy question. Let's see. All right, I know what my question are. So, uh, all right, I know what it is and I'm gonna pull back up so you guys don't see it. Okay, so my question to you, and you gotta answer this and you only have two minutes. All right, I'm gonna do a counter in two minutes to actually answer this question right now. So, my question is, what is the best starting point, or I should say, when you're running the 1% lookalike audience, what is the first number or the recommended number or the best number of purchasers or email list of your buyers um, to run your 1% lookalike? Wow, I immediately got 2 million. Uh, part humans at 2 million. So keep throwing it in. I already got some people that answer correctly already. Um, keep pouring it in. I'm just going to give you, I, mean, I can't find my timer. What the heck is my timer? Uh, where's my timer? My timer is over here. It's timer. No, wait, stopwatch. Basically now we only have a minute left. Uh, cancel. I have, I'm just going to do one minute. And we're going to start now. So we have one minute and you got to answer the question. What is the first number of lookalike for 1% of the buyers that I highly recommend you guys to run? So this, how many, for example, maybe how many sales that you have um, before you run the best lookalike of 1% of your buyers. So there is 32 seconds left. 32 seconds left. All right. So I have a lot of people pouring in and I'm going to check both. Uh, surprisingly, no one got it right. So you have to, my question is, when you're running the 1% look alike of your buyers, your source or the seed audience or the number of sale that you should have is how many? 
the best recommended number, okay? Oops, and the timer hits right now. All right, so again, like I said, I'm gonna answer it and go to webinar. So let me see. All right, the first person to answer it correctly is Vendi, I don't know why your last name is VP Life 1995. Uh, so it's Vendi, 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 Vendi. I am texting you right now on go to webinar. Please let me know your PayPal address. So guys, congratulate Vendi for winning our five hundred dollar. What the heck? Oh, my go to webinar is freezing up. All right, so if you guys are still here, um, and Fendi, if you are still here, my GoToWebinar is freezing up on me right now if you guys are actually still listening to me. Um, and it is not crashing because GoToWebinar crashed on me. We will have a lot more stuff coming up in November. So make sure you watch out for my email. Okay, I got uh, Fendi's email address, sweet. So again, watch out for my email. Make sure you guys um, have everything you need. And uh, it's 500, the answer is 500 right here. So if you look, the best audience, your goal is to get 500 sales and run 1%, okay? It's the best number right here, all right? So other than that, that's all for today, guys. I look forward on seeing you guys in November, but I will still email you guys, give you guys some new training. Um, we're just going to basically say goodbye to our, I will call this maybe the first season of our Ask Fright Lamb show. We will have something up in the near future, but make sure you watch out for my email and you guys will see it from there, all right? So keep hustling, keep go, 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 keep working on your business and look forward on seeing you guys in November or make sure that you open my emails because we will have a lot of things happening in October at the same time. So I'll see you guys very, 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 very soon. All right. Bye now.